I'm really pleased to welcome Ryan Doherty, whose talk is Pandemic Impacts, Contemporary Collaborations. And I have to say that, um, you know, we've been collaborating really closely with Contemporary Calgary and specifically with Ryan, and it has just been such a pleasure to get to know uh, what Contemporary Calgary has been doing and, and get to know Ryan uh, more than I did. Anyway, Ryan Doherty is a writer, a curator, an administrator working out of Lethbridge and Calgary. Uh, he received an MA from the Center uh, for Curatorial Studies at Bard College in New York. He also uh, has an undergraduate degree from the University of Lethbridge, which he finished in 1997. He worked at the U of L Art Gallery, curating exhibitions from their extensive collections, extensive and important collections, and at the Southern Alberta Art Gallery as both the director and curator until relatively recently. His curatorial practice has explored the construction of meaning in the information age, social practice and community engagement, and notions of maintenance, adaptability, and institutional reflection. As an administrator, Doherty has become well-versed in arts advocacy, and in particular, with helping direct institutions through facility renovations and expansions. And of course, that expertise has been so valuable at Contemporary Calgary. He is currently the chief curator with Contemporary Calgary and a wonderful colleague. Ryan, it's great to welcome you here. And, uh, I will stop sharing and welcome you to uh, share your screen. Well, thank you very much, Michelle. That was a very generous introduction uh, and a pleasure to be here as part of this important series. I think Nicola Noon is, is such a, uh, a great program that you're running and deserves all the accolades it gets. So I'm just going to um, share my screen here. And we can begin. So yeah, it has been an interesting couple of years. Um, who knew what, what the pandemic would bring? And um, what I found was that there was a lot of really, despite the horrible negative things that the pandemic brought, there was a lot of positive things that came out of it. Um, a lot of it being uh, collaborations that, that, and digital kind of modes that have been proven very successful. So we've done a lot of stuff at Contemporary Calgary in the last couple of years that have taken a different sort of form. Um, but I wanted to discuss two in particular today. One is Field Trip, Art Across Canada, and the other was Collider, the in-residence artist residency. Um, to begin, I just wanted to talk very briefly about Contemporary Calgary. So we've only been around for a short while. Um, well, we, we like to joke that we're the longest running startup around because the initiative for, to, to, to create an organization of scale like this in Calgary has been around for some 20 years. In fact, I was involved when I was a student at the U of L setting up an exhibition in the old AGT building in Calgary as part of uh, IMCA, which later became uh, Contemporary Calgary in collaboration with the Art Gallery of Calgary and the Museum of Contemporary Art Calgary. So there's these three organizations that join forces to, to really become a, a more prominent um, organization in the city. And when the opportunity came to take over the former Planetarium Science Center in Calgary, we jumped at it. Um, this is an amazing 1967 building, um, part of the Centennial um, Awards that were given. Uh, designed by Jack Long. It's absolutely a phenomenal example of brutalism. And we have, a, you know, some incredible resources there. There's uh, obviously a dome, which is really special. And we're excited to see the kind of programming we can do there. Um, really immersive art, art encounters. We also have an auditorium, which, you know, we can do music, uh, theater, um, pa panels, talks, workshops, films. It's, it's such an incredible resource. Then we also have two main gallery spaces, all averaging around 5,000 square feet each. So lots of opportunities for exhibitions and public programs all over the place. So we're really excited to think of Contemporary Calgary as, uh, as a cultural hub, as much as an art gallery. Uh, there's so much stuff that we can be doing. Uh, so yeah, we opened very recently, uh, January 23rd, 2020. And we're open for a short seven weeks before uh, COVID struck and we were forced to close. 
So while we were building up this incredible momentum and um, having, you know, what we had 1,200 people at the opening. And then in, in early March, we have held a big event called Look, which brought in hundreds and hundreds of people and raised tons of money and support. And there was all this excitement and then boom, shut down. So we were scrambling. Um, one of the things we started to think about is like, okay, what are, are we going to do? Just because we're closed doesn't mean we're stopping the work that we do. So we really focused on uh, identifying our key goals. So this was to continue engaging our communities with art and culture. This is super important. And there's lots of ways we can do that without a you know, visitable uh, location. Importantly, artists were suffering um, as much as anybody, if not more. So we really wanted to find things that we could do that would continue supporting artists locally, nationally, internationally, that was putting uh, money in their pockets, that was engaging them around art and art ideas. Um, and then fin finally, continuing developing digital content online. It's not like we were already doing this uh, digital stuff. We have been doing it for many years as, as every organization across, but how could we grow that and how could we make it more relevant to the time? I'll point out this lovely image of the COVID-19 virus that was done by British artist Luke Jerram, all, all blown glass. Uh, just a remarkable, remarkable work. And he was quick to point out that all the colors, colorful coronaviruses you see are actually just um, fake modifications that, that would be more transparent than anything. So this is actually quite a, a true to life model. Uh, so as we were scrambling, we're creating things, we're creating challenges and, and we were not alone. There was a barrage of content. Uh, there was no doubt that every time I opened up my social media platforms or, or emails, I was being invited to take part in some other kind of fun thing to do that was creative and innovative and fun. And uh, some of them like 30 day art challenges or reproduce a you know famous painting, something like that. Uh, there was a lot of stuff. And frankly, it was almost saturated with things. And I found myself struggling to find good content, consistent content, um, relevant content. Some of the things were, were just not speaking to me. And I was, it got me thinking that surely there was something we could do to kind of curate this content in some way or so find ways to select it. So with that barrage, we started to think, okay, if our goals are to produce high quality, engaging, relevant, consistent, and easy to find um, digital programming, what do we need to do that? We certainly needed financial capacity. We certainly needed human resources, technical skills and technical equipment. We had, we had that, we were ready to go. So with those things crossed over, we realized that what we needed is if you could share the creation and distribution of this content through a single but connected platform, then organizations could focus on producing high quality digital programming with less frequency individually, but more frequency collectively and with a far broader reach. So in another way of saying it was that, you know, we had only so much capacity to make, you know, develop new digital programs with, with artists. Um, we couldn't do that every day, but collectively we could have tons of programming that were shared coast to coast. So with this idea, Field Trip was born. Um, Field Trip Art Across Canada. So this is a new online platform that delivers art experiences with Canada's artists uh, in a national partnership with leading organizations. This is a, this, this gift that's rotating through here, you know, shows some of the partners that we were working with at the very beginning that started with like three or four that were interested. And within a month, it had snowballed to over 45 um, partnered organizations. And an important distinction with Field Trip compared to say something like Akimbo or another platform for sharing what's happening at galleries is that these are not advertisements for exhibitions. This was engaging programming, activities that you could do and take part in. So we did things like children's programs, there was artist talks, there's workshops, and it's all designed for different age groups um, and a range of subjects. And all of them were dealing with or all of them have the benefit of supporting artists during this challenging time. Um, yeah, so here's, here's just a quick map that I wanted to share of 
you can't see all of the partners, but a handful of the 45 partners are all spread out, including in two of the territories. So it was a really diverse spread of what is being made in communities across the country. And that was a really important aspect of field trip. Um, this is a limited to Canada, but you can imagine the potential for something like this growing um, throughout North America, beyond. There's really nothing but potential for field trip. Um, here's a great quote that summarizes things that a, a, one of our partner organizations uh, quoted, and I'll just like to read it. We believed in the idea that we could be stronger by allying our forces, and we were motivated to join a Canada-wide circle of art institutions. It was an opportunity to uplift the work and voices of our exhibiting artists in conversation with others, especially in the context of closure. We also saw it as an opportunity to grow our online presence and support the growth of other organizations. And I really like that support the growth of other organizations. It just has this real collective spirit that I think is really um, rewarding in, in our arts community in Canada, that we're not siloed in our own little communities, that we're stronger together. Uh, Field Trip was really able to do that. I mean, one of the models is that you create I'm just going to run through a field trip, uh, field trip case study. I think we'll give you a sense of how it works. So we started our first uh, field trip with a local Calgary duo, David Jen, just tremendous artist um, working in the city. Um, field trip starts with social media posts and social media trailers so that it gets out there very quickly through Instagram and Facebook and things of that nature. Very easy to produce. So I'm just going to play this video of an example of what this trailer would look like. We've been using cut silhouette forms one way or another in our work for over 14 years and it's something that comes from our interest in early animation. We use our cut paper animations as components in our multimedia installation work. Paper animation is actually super accessible these days and we're going to show you how to make a hinged paper puppet that you can use for your own future animations or in whatever other ways you can think of. So fun, playful, family friendly. This was a really popular field trip that people took part in that um, like actually well over a thousand people uh, went to this activity. I don't know how many did it, but a lot of people were attracted to it. And this was like within the first week of launching field trips. So that was, it was just growing very, very quickly. There was an appetite for this kind of programming uh, during the pandemic in a really big way. Whoops. Um, the next aspect is a, that's important to field trip. It's not just social media. It also has this website repository. I encourage you all to go to you know fieldtrip.art, where you'll see a, you know a whole slew of content from institutions across the country uh, doing fun things, and it's all there saved. It's a, it becomes a great resource for things like educators who want to run a program. They can come to this site see some various things that have been done and adapt it for their classroom environment. So uh, the repository is really important um, and there's still work to do. There's still a lot of potential. We're excited to see how we could um, perhaps pr provide more filters, filters by ages, filters by media, filters by artist talks or workshops or different things like that. Uh, there's a, a lot of potential. So, a few of the key learnings or questions um, and things that we've noticed because not everything's perfect and you know mistakes are made or maybe there's not enough capacity so you know I, the first one was that activity on the field trip platform started to plateau in august so it was very busy for march april may june um, lots of attention but basically started to peak in august and now in current times has really tailed off uh it's tailed off less in how many people are hitting on the site or checking out the post, it's more um, waning from capacity at the organizational level. So less and less 
digital programs that our activities are being designed or that are being shared. Um, so the question becomes, how do we make this platform sustainable? As I said, it's got tons of potential, but how do we keep make it really resilient and uh, allow it to, to flourish? So uh, how do we get partner organizations to share more again? And what factors contribute to them not sharing or engaging? Everybody loves the idea. Everybody is keen to share their content. Um, part of the problem is that they're not as easily able to share other people's content We're, you know there's a lot of social media strategies out there and we all have like timelines for when we're posting things and we start posting other people's content when you have your own backlog of content uh, your own organization to share it runs into some problems so there's some things to figure out there and one of the solutions that we see is actually having uh hiring a full-time administrator for field trip because as it is right now field trip is really a self-generated um, project. People at each organization develop their own posts based on templates that we use. They share them themselves. Uh, and we don't actually, Contemporary Calorie doesn't run Field Trip. Uh, it's, a, it's a collective organization that's run by all these 45 plus organizations. Uh, and then between the host platform, us and all the partner organizations involved, there's a lot of data that's come out of this. And how do we use this data to inform how field trip moves forward? Um, as an example, I can tell you that like the Dave and Jen make a cut paper puppet um, was a very successful field trip. Um, it was fun. It was family friendly. As I said, uh, it was easy to do. Uh, it was playful. Uh, it was because of all those things. It was a very successful one that had a lot of hits. Whereas, you know, really academic artist talks not surprisingly, didn't do as well. So you start to think maybe there's ways to shift the kinds of activities that are being promoted at a particular time or, or that there could be ways of creating uh, patterns of when to release certain activities. But that's also an important thing about this platform was that it's meant to really reflect what you're already doing in your organization. This isn't necessarily about creating new content. It's about sharing the current content that your organization is already doing. So that's field trip. Um, I think I'm still on time here. Uh, the next thing I wanted to chat about is Collider. So Collider is uh, a really interesting program that sort of launched pre-pandemic, but as an ongoing series, it changed during the pandemic. And that's where I wanted to focus. So in general, the Collider Artist Residency Program, um, it's an activation of a venue that creates dialogue with local, national, international artist communities. It's meant to, to create this, a source of a catalyst for collaborative experimentation and discovery through a collision of ideas and actions. And that's where Collider comes from. It's this collision of people, their ideas, their, their, their thoughts, their feelings, their actions. Um, it's also a really great way to respond to the appetite for inclusion and diversity. We're able to host any number of different kinds of residencies through this platform. Um, and then it became, becomes a really interesting way of animating the residency through exhibitions and public programs. Uh, we had a, a really incredible first residency with some 36 artists, all doing on-site residencies at the Contemporary Calgary, many working for anywhere from a month to three months in in-house, uh, at the conclusion of which we ran an exhibition called Planetary. And here you'll see an example of a work by Dan Hudson that was in Planetary called Eclipse, uh, which was just a stunning, um, stunning installation. And there were many, many excellent, excellent works that were included in Planetary. So Collider, in theory, had this really nice rhythm of we can have a residency, we can have the public programs with each of the artists, and then we can have the exhibition at the end and just have this cycle through where we're always able to show national and uh, local and international artists. But then of course, during COVID things changed and we really wanted to run another, another iteration of Collider, but it, things clearly had to be shifted. Residencies at Contemporary Calgary simply weren't possible. So we thought, all right, well, what can we do that people don't have to leave their home when they're already isolated. Uh, we decided that we could have an in-residence artist residency where we would meet over Zoom um, 
have discussions and invite guest speakers, uh, do studio visits, create collaborative artworks, things of that sort. And we thought, you know, this is this is very doable and it will take a different form. But I think the, the, just the, the dialogue and discourse shared through this could be just as rich. So we put out an open call and we received some 300 submissions from 65 different countries around the world. I mean, it was so clear that artists were craving contact, craving some sort of way of being active during this pandemic. Uh, being, it's, it became a social outlet. So we had uh, 12 artists from around the world that all participated. And I would say it was an incredible success because even though this, this residency was designed to be six weeks long, it ended up being closer to four months long by the time we actually ended it because everyone wanted to keep going. They're just like, no, let's just keep meeting. We're having fun. We're really enjoying the collaborative process. We're really enjoying um, seeing what other artists are doing. And it was like, it was like being back in school, a lot of them said, where they had that close contact to really um, thoughtful people and artists. Um, but in the same way that Collider, the first iteration produced Planetary, this one uh, more recently we thought would be a great exhibition uh, to bring these in-residence artists to our site. So that's happening right away here. That's our next opening uh, in March, uh, March 3rd. So I'd really like to see a lot of you there. It's gonna be really exciting. So it is this culmination of all the discussions and artworks made directly during the residency or um, reflecting on some of the conversations that were part of it. So there's work in all sorts of different kinds. You, you might expect there to be digital and online work and there certainly is given that it was produced during that time, but also lots of sculpture and performance and social practice. Um, really thinking about how re rerouting is really about these alternative approaches to, to making work and being social in this time when you're otherwise can't leave your home. Um, and what we found is that uh, connecting and communicating with people was just at the top of everyone's list. Um, there's many artists who just want to work in a bubble, but I don't think that's true of, uh, of most. So what did we learn from Collider? Um, I think there was a, there's a number of things. While the online residency was successful, uh, what a lot of the artists really expressed was that they, they weren't happy to work only digitally typically and really enjoyed a sense of materiality and physicality still to their, to their practice. Uh, at the same time, have, creating social and collaborative works, things that were built on networks uh, online also could be facilitated physically through networks on the ground. And so we might have, for example, in our exhibition, we have an artist who's creating workshops to make pom-poms. We have an artist that's, you know, sharing uh, sourdough starters uh, where you share it, you bake a loaf of bread, and then you send the bread and the sourdough to the next person. And it goes down the chain until it arrives at contemporary Calgary. Like really interesting ways that use, not unlike mail art, but in a more online way, uh, thinking through social practices. Um, this was important because a lot of artists were dealing with isolation and a lot of anxiety and still are during the, this pandemic. Um, so this online residency was a really valuable outlet for, for people. Um, this was also quite interesting in that where our first residency was very local, um, the online residency provided an incredible asset that we were able to work locally, nationally, and internationally. So we had artists certainly from Calgary, but also from Canada, and then as far flung as, uh, you know, um, India and China and South America, like all over the place. So it became, a, it was really special that being able to remove those barriers around inclusion and, and include artists that weren't able to attend. Um, but again, as the pandemic wanes and Zoom fatigue becomes acute, are online residencies still a viable program? Um, they were already expressed a sense of resisting the only digital, only online world uh, in favor of some sort, of, some sort of physicality and social connection. And in particular, as we're all so sick and tired of being on Zoom meetings, and, and you know, I'm sure even with the uh, nickel at noon talks, uh, if there has there been a waning of interest in this because people spend so much time in front of a screen. 
Um, so our another question then is our collaborative and social practice effective models when performed through a digital or online lens. Um, I, I would argue, yes, they're very effective and we're finding all sorts of new ways that we can create um, really collaborative works through the online model. So these are some of the key things. Now, more broadly thinking about um, both field trip and collider together, some of the key learnings and questions we had. Again, collaborative networks enable broader national and international engagement. I think that's super important. Uh, it's such a special way to work with artists from around the world when you don't have the, frankly, the added capital costs of flying people in, having to deal with um, you know, accommodations and per diems. Um, you're still able to pay them fees, but you don't have to bring them in. It's just simply a really effective way. Um, we found that these forms of collaboration are really empowering. And they allow us to do things together and share what we're learning instead of feeling alone, instead of feeling siloed. Uh, it's such a, the digital online world, um, creating online residencies, creating field trip, just really allows you to reach out to your colleagues and your peers and, your, and strangers and, and just really create a better, stronger sense of community. Um, one of the interesting things about the pandemic is that it really forced a lot of experimentation, certainly in contemporary Calgary, but everywhere. People were trying all sorts of different kinds of things, uh, as you'll see through Field Trip, the many different um, activities that were introduced. Um, some of them work, some of them don't. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes. And, and I think the pandemic really opened up a space for that kind of experimentation um, that, was, that was really quick, spontaneous and responsive. So, and then integrating some of these digital changes that we've made during this time into future programming post pandemic uh, is gonna be essential so that we continue to serve the people of the community who can't visit us in person. And that's one thing we've always said with um, Field Trip is that this isn't necessarily a pandemic platform. It was launched during that time and the impetus for it came through that uh, immediate isolation and how to, how to continue programming but there's no reason why it should end there. And so we're really excited to see um, how this evolves and how people continue to do online activities that people can participate in. We're really excited to see the website repository continue to grow. And as I said, being, as we add more filters, you'll be able to come on there and just say like, let me see what you got for children's programs and boom, you'll have a list from across the country of really exciting, engaging work um, that, connects you to other communities. Um, one thing we learned, I think that was that's interesting is that while a lot of content on YouTube or Vimeo, these sort of like um, recorded things happen, um, they still get a lot of views, but the, the retention rate for live streaming, live things and Zoom events still tends to be better than any kind of pre-recorded programming, uh, which I think is just more evidence that we need to continue doing this. So one thing, for example, that we're, we've, we've learned is that anytime we would do an artist talk or, or a panel or a thing like that at Contemporary Calgary in person, there is absolutely zero reason why that shouldn't also be live streamed uh, at the same time. So that we can, and uh, you know, as an example of that, we did a talk last week, which was really interesting. Um, we had 150 people in person. We had about 100 people online. So we just about doubled our attendance by being able to live stream what is normally just an in-person talk. Um, I think everyone who's been participating, whether Field Trip or Collider, really enjoyed that sense of human connection. And I think I've talked about that. Um, so the question then becomes, how can we better leverage social media and encourage a culture of promoting other organizations programming? I think that we're still not used to this idea of like sharing someone else's work uh, and, and promoting it when you're trying to promote, you're just trying to promote your own stuff, but being able to share another organization's work actually really helps grow that network of the arts. It helps grow engagement uh, for an audience who then is more interested in the things that you do, whether it's at your own facility. And finally, how do we sustain these projects and continue to serve the larger audiences we have reached in the future? 
we're finding out already that field trip is is floundering a bit right now we just need to you know we need to direct some capital at it we need maybe it's a sponsorship um there are solutions to this but we do need to kind of suss them out um we do need to figure out ways to adapt the platforms adapt our residencies so that um we can continue to reach audiences um coast to coast and beyond so that pretty much sums it up.